Uh, welcome to Much More on Medicine on the Think Tech Live Streaming Network Series, broadcasting from our downtown studio at Pioneer Plaza in downtown Honolulu. I'm your host, Katherine Knorr. Much More on Medicine is an opportunity to learn about all aspects of healthcare. I talk, about, I talk with guests about medical and alternative care treatment, insurance, medication, surgery, rehabilitation, prevention, and much more. Joining me in the studio is Stephanie Gailey to talk about breath and movement with intention. Stephanie Gailey is a professional tandem surfer and a certified personal trainer. She's also a Pilates instructor. Um, Stephanie and I, we actually met when I was regional coordinator of officials for USA Triathlon. She was one of my officials, so I've known her for a while. And actually, she came over to my home and taught me some exercises before. Welcome, Stephanie. It's good to be here, Catherine. It's great to be here with you. And I understand you are a professional tandem surfer. Yes, I am. How long have you been doing that? Well, I began in 2009, so about 10 years now. Oh, my gosh. OK, so what is tandem surfing? Tandem surfing is where um, there is a board that's about 11, 12 foot long, and the man paddles and the woman too, and um, and it's almost like, like like ice skating. So the lifts are um, acrobats. We do acrobat, but the whole part is being on a surfboard with each other. That's, that's the amazing part of it. So it's like ice skating, but on a surfboard. Were you a surfer before you started doing that? No, I was not. I <laughs> knew nothing about surfing, but I had a lot of water knowledge because I did the whole Red Cross swimming and I lifeguarded poolside um, for a while. So I wasn't afraid of the water, but um, the surfing part was all new to me. Oh, that's pretty interesting. So did you have to, you paddle out with your partner? Yes, um, we start from the shore, and the girl gets in front, and the man gets behind, and then you get you time your paddling with each other, and you paddle out. And to catch a wave, the man will call out, partner will call out, um, okay, paddle, and then stand up. And there's a technique to how you jump up and get get onto the board and start riding the wave. Okay, so let's. Um, I'm sure that our audience would love to see what this looks like. So let's bring up picture one. Okay, so. Now, is that you being held up? Yes, that is me. Okay. <laughs> so, um, what was this a competition? This was uh, Duke's Ocean Fest. I'm not sure what year, and that is my partner, Travis Long from California. Um, we were a pretty good size wave, and that lift is called an arabesque. So, it's a ballet move. Pretty much the background comes from um, I did ballet and gymnastics when I was growing up, and that helped a lot with um, knowing how to get into these lists and being flexible and having the strength. Okay, so when you, um, how, how is he able to lift you up in that position? Because it seems to me like that you might be kind of dead weight if you don't do it right, is that right? Yeah, there's, there's a lot of technique to it. I uh, know when you look at the pictures, it's like, how, how do you get there? Well, you paddle together, and you both stand up together, and it's almost like riding a motorcycle. Hmm. So I'll push all of my weight back onto him, and he become, we become one. He steers the board. I'm pretty much just going with the flow. To get into a lift, there's different transitions in that. We learn on land. We're coached at the gym. Um, we have great a great community of people that get together where we practice. Well, the lifts, well, for that lift, um, I actually turn around and face him, and I put my arm around his shoulder. But the important part is that there's a down up. So we both kind of go down, and then we both jump into the air. If we don't time it right, then I'll weigh about 200 pounds. If timed properly, then it's effortless, and the transitions are effortless. So. Okay. And today we're going to be talking about breathing and moving with intention. So when do you when you do this? Is that what you're doing? Oh yes, yes. There's a lot. Um, move. I'm a Pilates instructor, so that really helps with and a trainer. Uh, but everything goes out the door in a contest. It's pretty amazing because we practice and practice 
But when you put adrenaline and, and nerves with it during a contest, we forget, as, as many of us do, when stress hits in. Um, but yes, you're suppo you breathe. When you're paddling for the wave, that's a whole different, that's cardio and, and muscling. And then going into the lift, you need to be a little bit pliable and supple, not so stiff. Mm. Um, that's where it becomes such an amazing sport. Um, there's the strength and grace and flexibility. It's very extreme in all aspects. Fantastic. Now let's move to picture two. Okay. Oh. Um, now is that you? That is me. Okay. <laughs> and and tell us about this picture. Uh, this is Makaha. Amazing. Wow. An amazing year. Remember it very well. That is Augustine Constantino, my partner, and we were doing buffaloes. That year the waves were 18 to 22 feet. Probably the first time that tandem did this um, surfed in these conditions with such big waves, but it was amazing. Um, just the feel of being in the air like that. And of course, that's called a swan. That lift was a swan. Um, pretty much you're in a, in a cradle, like a, how a person cradles a baby, and then they kind of throw you over the shoulder like a sack of potatoes, pretty much. <laughs> but then my, my, um, my work is to be very very stiff and still so they don't tip the board over. Okay. And, um, and Makaha, the waves are really big there, aren't they? They're amazing. Yes, okay. that time of the year um, when they hold the buffaloes out in December, January, February. Okay. Now let's look at picture three. Okay. And uh, can you tell us about this picture, please? This is Duke's Ocean Fest. Um, I'm with Todd Robertson, and that lift is called a back angel on a pretty beautiful wave, what they would call shoulder high wave. Um, I'm, I'm not sure. I think we placed that year fourth podium at Duke's Ocean Fest. Okay, yes. which is quite an honor. Yes. All right. Yes. That's and a difficult lift. That's an extreme it's an extreme lift. It's an extreme lift. Okay, so you get high points, a lot of points for difficulty. Yes, the way I we're, um, ITSA is how is what we surf under the organization, and we have a lift chart where they'll have like low level level one lifts, level two, level three, and and the extremes. So the lifts you get um, scored on lifts and off also surfing ability. Mm -hmm. Okay, and and let's look at the last picture, please. Okay. Oh wow, you look fantastic in that <laughs> picture. And what are you doing there? That is called a one arm back. That's my partner Travis Long at Cardiff Reef. We won first place at that contest. The photographer Santa Sal Garcia, and I'm sorry to not mention on the first on a couple of the prior photos, Jerry Jarmillo is a photographer on those. Oh, terrific. I have to mention him because these guys are amazing to just capture us sure. in our moments. We're okay. very thankful. Okay, and so let's go back to picture four. Um, and okay. so what, what is that competition? That's Cardiff Reef. Swami's at Cardiff Reef. And that's Travis Long. This lift is called a one arm back. Okay. And that's a beautiful lift. It doesn't sc score high points, believe it or not. Mm. But it's an amazing photograph shot, and also it's amazing for the man to surf with the woman because he kind of uses your leg as a lever, uh -huh. and it's easy to steer, and women can stay in that lift for a pretty long time. Oh, okay. So. And how long do you usually stay in a lift? They, uh, three seconds. Oh. So there are points. When you surf professionally, uh, the, the woman has to weigh half the size of the man. Okay. Lifts have to be held for three seconds, otherwise they're not counted. Okay. And you have to have two feet touch the board when you land. Mm. Yeah. It reminds me of gymnastics when yes. you, uh, the way uh, we see the gymnasts land uh, with uh, sticking a landing. Yes. Okay. Yes. So do they call it that or what do they call it when you stick that landing? Sticking a landing. <laughs> okay. pretty, pretty much because they'll still count it, but sometimes you'll, you're, it will slip off the board. You might have a fall. Mm, if, okay. you, if two people fall completely in the water, they're not going to score that lift. Okay. So the woman's feet, one foot has to touch the board. Okay. 
Now, you are a grandmother, is that correct? <laughs> <laughs> Catherine. <laughs> so I am. Yeah, so the, you are, you've been doing this for quite a while, and you have demonstrated a lot of longevity in this, okay? And so we're gonna get to that a little bit later, but what I wanna ask you is, I understand you also have some certifications as a um, trainer yes. and, and also Pilates. Why don't you tell us about that? Oh my goodness. <laughs> well, I started off as a nail technician. Okay. Back in the in 89 when my first child was born. Bringing it up to par in 2005, I wanted to change occupations. I was like, I'm sitting for a long time. I want to do something different. So I got into fitness and I got certified in aqua therapy and worked with the mermaids at YWCA here on Richard Street in Hawaii and then went to YMCA of Honolulu and became a personal trainer and a Pilates instructor. And it's, it saved my life in being able to help others. Um, the more I I take care of myself and learn these neat things the more I want to share with others and it's just keeping keeping people healthy and happy and letting them know no, never to give up and if you have a dream go for it don't let anything stop you so that's where um, that's kept me healthy and and the more you exercise the more your body just craves good food to eat right and to sleep and and feeling good about yourself and, and so when we see you being lifted up, we see your body and it's phenomenal. And so what you're doing is you're showcasing that at any age, you can be the best you can be by exercise, diet, good sleep, and, you know, nutritional food. Is that right? Absolutely. Fantastic. Well, I th you know, my hope is that people can be inspired. And the reason why I really wanted to showcase your, um, your work as a professional tandem surfer is to inspire people. And, you know, I, I think that's really exciting to people that they think even a grandmother could <laughs> do that and look as great as you do. So, okay, um, we're taking a short break. I'm Catherine Knorr. This is much more on medicine on the Think Tech Live Streaming Network series. We're talking with Stephanie Gailey about breath and movement with intention. Aloha, my name is Victoria and I'm a host at the Adventures in Small Business. This is a collaboration between U.S. Small Business Administration, Hawaii District Office, and its partners, where we showcase the stories of local entrepreneurs and small businesses, talk about how to start a business, talk about great tips for small business owners, uh, please join us every Thursday, 11 a.m. at Think Tech Hawaii. Um, see you soon. Mahalo. Good afternoon. I'm Howard Wig, host of Code Green on Think Tech Hawaii, having more fun than a <laughs> barrel of monkeys, and I look forward to it in the foreseeable future. And I am Lauren Reichel, Blue Planet Foundation's Clean Transportation Director and a talk show guest on Think Tech Hawaii today, talking about electric vehicle infrastructure and the incentives and benefits that exist for EVs here in Hawaii. And this fall, Think Tech Hawaii needs you. Help us deliver the content you love by giving to our fall fund drive, as I, even as a host, do. As a nonprofit, we can only provide our unique quality of programming because of the generosity of viewers, supporters, hosts, and guests. Every dollar sustains us. Please go to thinktechhawaii.com and click on the Donate button, or send your check to Think Tech Hawaii, 900 Fort Street Mall, Suite 888, very lucky number, Honolulu 96813. Your donation is tax deductible and deeply appreciated, and thank you very much. We're back. We're live. I'm Catherine Knorr, and this is much more on medicine on the Think Tech live streaming network series. And we're talking with Stephanie Gailey about breath and movement with intention. Stephanie, I 
I want to give a shout out to your sponsors. Why don't you tell us your sponsors for professional tandem surf okay. surfing? My sponsors are Ainofia on Kauai, Huuvai Fitness, um, Hualani Hawaii Bathing Suits, Moku Surf Shop, Lululem I am a Lululemon ambassador, and I'm the owner of In Health Hawaii. Okay, fantastic. And In Health Hawaii, why don't you tell us about what you do for In Health Hawaii? In Health Hawaii. I'm contracted out to work at, the, I teach classes at the Hyatt, and I also train people in my own home. And then Pu'u by Fitness, I have my website, they help me out with my website and whatnot. So I, I love Pilates Reformer, um, and I love Pilates, classic Pilates. It's, it's, it's almost, it's a little bit l lower than having a physical therapist. I want to say lower. Um, like having a physical therapist. Pilates, um, it's stretching and strength, and we go by breath put with the movement, and taking that, that discipline into daily living with sitting in your car, working at your desk, the different sports, surfing, my tandem surfing, tennis, golf, Pilates can be used for everything. Okay, so I'm someone who sits at my desk a lot. Okay, why don't you tell me what kind of things I can do to incorporate some movement and intention with breath into what I do? Okay. What I see, I work with clients a lot, and what I see is they are, they're always at their desk, and you've got your hands out in front, and you're kind of slumping. What, you, what I'd like you to do is find your sits bones and sit up straight. They do say the shoulders up, back, and down. When you breathe, inhale through your nose, and as you exhale, lift the chest. So you would do four breaths, inhale, and then exhale, and one more, and then keep lifting. Now the reason that's important is if you're not paying attention, the body's going to be at your desk and you're breathing and you take your one hand, inhale and then you slump your next inhale, slump, and, and that's what brings everybody forward through ages 70 and 80. The spine can't hold up anymore. Um, I could show you one really good exercise. Please do. I'd like to see it. Okay. So if you're at your desk, you're going to take your two this, put them together, and then you're going to hold your shoulders. I'm pressing very tightly with my, my hands together. I'm going to inhale and bring the head forward. And then exhale. Take my ear to my shoulder, and then inhale, pull the neck up straight, exhale forward, <sighs> inhale down, exhale to the side, inhale up, exhale center, inhale forward. Release your position. So right there, you put the breath with the movement. And also, you're bringing your posture, your thoracic spine up, and giving your neck a good workout. So that's a little exercise that would go a long way and um, wake you up. You won't have neck pain anymore, and get your shoulders right and the posture right. And how often would you do that exercise to have optimize it? I've always thought it'd be really cool to have a timer on people's computers that alarmed them. Okay. And I would say 15. 15 to 30 minutes. Okay, so you're going to do that. That's going to be your invention where you yeah. have, and then a little, a little video of you will come up and go, okay, it's time to breathe. I thought, exactly. It's going to, let's do our breathing and take a drink of water. Okay, okay. Yes. And why, why breathing and taking a breath of water and pausing? I've noticed, and with myself too, I, I've learned a lot from injuries and my, my own mistakes that we're society is going so fast and we don't know how to settle down and stress you've got a project that's thrown on your desk that or you're driving in the car and you have to take your your late your kids to school so everybody's up here with their shoulders mm -hmm. and they're breathing right about here <laughs> and to and what that does is it releases cortisol and stress and just all these not good chemicals that throw your whole body out of whack so to take that time to settle down and use your breath, which should be an inhale, filling up the deep back of the rib cage and the diaphragm, 
And then as you exhale, a contraction should happen where the stomach pulls back towards the spine. I don't like saying belly button to spine, okay. but it, it does contract. And you do about eight of those breaths, and it brings you back to center. Okay. If not, what happens is it's, it's like a backwards breathing. You inhale, the stomach goes inwards, and you exhale, and the stomach goes out. What I like is I have people at least test themselves. You know, for the people at home, I would say, try it out. Okay. See where your breath is going. Okay. Um, Stephanie, I just asked you to move your ponytail a little bit oh. so that we can <laughs> Sorry about that. hear you better. Okay. Thank you. Um, okay. So um, do you have another exercise you would like to share with us? So another one, um, when, when I did lifeguarding, a lifeguard actually taught me this. It's pretty cool. You're sitting at your desk and your eyes are getting tired. You would just not touch your opposite hand to your body, but with your, this hand, you take it over. And just hold for 18 seconds. Okay. Time it because it takes about 18 seconds for the blood to completely circle the carotid artery. Okay. And then as you let go, slowly release and then do the opposite side. Hand goes over. Okay. And then slowly release. Oh, know? wow. Okay. Yeah, so you should be, feel bright and a little bit woken up. And of course, the next stretch again. Now, as a professional tandem surfer, I, I imagine you have quite a workout um, program. So can you tell us a little bit about what you do? Uh, oh, my goodness. I do a lot. I do Pilates, and I have a reformer that I do work on. And what's, what's reformer? Reformer is a machine that was invented by Joseph Pilates. Uh, it's really interesting. He actually was held as a prisoner of war in World War II by the Germans to rehab their soldiers. So he tore apart the beds and used the springs and the frames and made a piece of equipment that you lay, you lay on instead of standing. And all, most of the exercises are done that way. The reason is because when, you stand, when you're standing, you have 100% of gravity on your spine. When you lay down, it goes to 0% gravity. You can turn off the bossy muscles mm -hmm. and start working the deep intrinsic muscles throughout the body, and, and that's another thing that's happening is people, our, our quadriceps, our thighs are strong, our arms are strong, but we're lacking all the muscles that support the spine. And I see it with children in our schools and all the devices that they're playing on with the slouching and the head forward, we're not meant to be in that position mm. if not corrected. Um, it, it leads to chronic pain and, and that's another reason why people are not breathing. It all goes together. When we're in pain, we don't breathe. And when we're stressed, we don't breathe. Mm -hmm. So to take time out to have to move with intention, to breathe with intention, means when you're going to your workout classes and your circuit classes, your HIIT classes, CrossFit, to really slow down and be aware of what you're doing, be mm -hmm. aware of how you're breathing, you will get fast and you will become strong. But you have to have that foundation set first. I learned that with myself. I was go, go, going, and I ended up being very injured mm. um, in a contest. So it brought me back to basics, but it opened my eyes to know that you have to build, build first from the ground up. So you need these as fundamentals. Then. Absolutely. Okay. That's what they are, principles and mm -hmm. fundamentals. Um, that's how Pilates goes. There's seven principles, and they go from precise fluid, controlled. Contrology was a big word that Joseph used in his classic Pilates, and it makes so much sense. I like to tell people that their, their upper body is like a two by four, and the hip girdle is another two by four. We pretty much just have Lego pieces snapped in. Mm -hmm. So you can either move in different parts, or you can pull everything together and use the core of the body. And the core is not just the tummy, not just the abdominals. It includes the shoulder girdle and the hip girdle, which um, when you do these small movements, but you do them with intention, you'll save yourself from hip surgeries and knee surgeries, shoulder problems. Um, yeah. Is it too late if, if you're a grandmother and you start at that point? No. <laughs> oh, my goodness. Never too late. I, I love <laughs> Never too late. I... I love it, and I, I want to inspire people to know that 
you can be 70 and be like, oh, okay, I want to try that out. And go and do that. Find that Pilates class or find that instructor that motivates you and inspires you. Find something new. There's, there's always something to learn. Well, it's, it's a process. It's yeah. not something that you're going to do it a few classes and have major changes. You have to do it for ongoing, right? Yes, uh, I mean, definitely. you have to have continuity. Yes. Okay. Yes. Okay. Consistency. D discipline. Yeah, but right. Discipline of determination and a, and a schedule. Like, write it on the calendar. Right. Mm -hmm. Well, what I've done in terms of, tri I did 200 um, classes at 24-hour fitness in one year, and oh I put an X on my calendar each time, and then I counted them all up for the year, and it happened to be 201, something like that. That's a but lot. it was that X on the calendar of you know that really helped me a lot in getting uh, into going to classes. Right to see the accomplishment. And, right. And I always tell people, don't don't think of the end goal. Think of the a short-term goal. Sure. Yeah, sure. And have and then just go. Be present. Right. Be present. So in being present, the breathing is definitely something that's important. Um, if you're like present, you're thinking about breathing, right? Yes. Present and intention. So every move. Um, I I like to slow people down because they'll be like, I just want to get this over with and go fast. And I'm like, uh, I'm really happy if you do two really good ones. Because if you do Eight really fast ones, the next six might be terrible, and your right. body's not in the in that perfect position that's going to work all the muscles properly. Well, you've told you've taught us so much today and inspired us. And um, okay, we're out of time, <laughs> and we'll have to wrap it up. I'm Catherine Noor. This is much more on medicine on the Think Tech Live <laughs> Streaming Network series. We've been talking with Stephanie Gailey about breath and movement with intention. Thank you for joining us today. Thank you to our broadcast engineer, our floor manager, and to Jay Fidel, our executive producer who puts it all together. Please join us for future ThinkTech productions. Aloha.